Let's look at two other plots now. So we say write the R code to get these two graphs. So the different, the R, so here the addition that we now see is that the color of the point depends upon the drive and the color of the line, the smooth line, also depends upon the drive. Okay, so the color of the point and the color of the line both depend upon the drive and also the point is still bigger than usual, right, the size of the point. Okay, so this plot is almost the same except that there is only one smooth line. Here you see three smooth lines depending, uh, one smooth line for each kind of drive. Here we see only one smooth line. Okay, so the points are colored according to the drive but the smooth line is not affected by the drive at all. It's just a smooth line. Okay, so just let's think about what we'll do here. So clearly, since the, the line color is determined by the drive, the point color is also determined by the drive. And of course, the X and Y aesthetics are the same for both the smoothing as well as the point. Because of all of this, we can clearly say ggplot data equals mpg. And then in the aesthetics, we can say x equals displacement, y equals highway. And we can also say color equals drive within the aesthetics, right? That is because the color, uh, the, that particular value of aesthetic, the color, is the same for both the geoms that we are using, geom point and geom smooth, right? So once again, we can follow the approach of putting everything inside the ggplot call and then simply saying uh, uh, geom point and geom smooth except of course that in geom point we have to increase the size and in geom smooth we have to say sc equals false because uh, although we have the smooth line we don't have the confidence intervals okay so that's what will be for this one and for this one everything is the same except that we would prefer not to put color in the ggplot call because then that will also flow through to the uh, to the geom smooth which we don't want right so in this case we'll put the x and y coordinates in the ggplot call, but in the gg uh, geom point, we'll put color equals drive as within the aesthetic, and then outside the aesthetic, we'll put size equals 3, right? Because the size is not determined by any variable, it's fixed, so we'll put it outside the aesthetic. And for geom smooth, all we have to say is sc equals false, because there is no confidence interval, okay? So that's, the, that's what's going on here. So you can see here, like I said, uh, for this one, the first plot, we put everything inside ggplot, x equals displacement, y is highway, color is drive, and then geom point, size equals 3, and geom smooth, se equals false. Okay, So these three, the data and x, y, and color, all of them were common for both of the geoms, point and smooth. And each of them had its own properties, like point had a size property, and smooth had se equals false. Okay, So for this one, as we discussed, we're going to put only the X and Y aesthetics inside the GG plot. And in geom point, we are going to say size is 3 outside of the aesthetic. And inside the aesthetic, we only have to say color equals drive, which is instead of putting the color equals drive up in GG plot, now that applies only to the geom point uh, layer. So we put it here. And geom smooth, we put it separately. And we just say SE equals false. Right? We don't say any color or any such thing here. Okay, So that's the way uh, this particular thing uh, works. You can see from here. So uh, the reason I'm repeating this part of the lecture from the last class is uh, this tells you how to think about ggplot. When you're doing the plotting, when you look at a chart, you can immediately, you should be able to see, okay, uh, what is the data set? What are the various aesthetics that we need to point? And what are the kind of geoms that I'm going to use? And within that, is there any uh, anything that's going on that is based on the value of some other attribute? You know, for example, the color or the line type or something. Then you'll be able to assemble all of this quite easily. Okay, so two more. Um, so first, let's see. Here, this is very much similar to the previous uh, things in the sense that it's the same X and Y. Color is based on, uh, on the drive. So that is also similar to earlier one except that the smooth lines, they don't have SE. I mean, they don't have the confidence interval. So if the SE is going to be false, but the smooth lines are distinguished by the line type. Okay, the line type is what is distinguishing the smooth line as opposed to the line color. 
okay so once again you see that the color aesthetic now applies only to the uh, to geom point doesn't apply to the geom smooth and the line type applies only to geom smooth but obviously it doesn't apply to uh, geom point okay so clearly a good strategy to approach this would be to uh, put in the gg plot call we put the data equals mpg and then we are going to say uh, the uh, aesthetic mapping equals aesthetic x equals displacement y equals highway okay so that part is common to both the geoms that we are going to use geom point and geom smooth but inside geom point we are going to say size equals 3 because once again this is slightly thicker the point is slightly fatter than before and then we are going to say color equals drive because the color of the point depends upon the number of drives uh, the car has I mean what kind of drive the car has and then we are going to say geom smooth again se equals false but in the aesthetic we are going to say line type equals drive okay so the nice part about this is that uh, since both of the uh, thing both of the aesthetics sorry both of the geoms are used or basing something on the drive uh, variable the drive attribute and both of them are based on the drive attribute so it combines the the legend shows you a combined legend for both of those things it includes the line type and the color okay it's not coming out too well in this uh, but that's what it does so okay it's being economical in what it does okay so that's what this is so let's look at the code and then we'll come back to this okay so the code is exactly as we said data and then aesthetics x and y we put it in here uh, and then for the point we just say color equals drive size equals 3 is outside of the aesthetic because size is now fixed and for geom smooth we say line type equals drive so that determines the line type and then se equals false because there is no uh, confidence interval okay so that's so far as this particular chart is concerned let's take a look at this second chart okay the second chart is a little uh, funky in the sense that the points look a little crazy right they've got a white band around them and the points are colored based on uh, based on drive how do you get this right the way to get this is in fact to plot the geom point aesthetic twice okay once I'm going to plot the geom point with color equals drive size equals something okay the second time I'm going to plot the geom point again but this time I'm going to increase the size and then I'm going to say the color of the color of every point is just white right so what I'm actually doing in fact I should plot the white first so first I plot a layer a scatter plot layer with all the points colored as white disks right nice big white points then I come back and do a normal plot of all the uh, uh, points this time with a different color right so the point that you're seeing is actually two points first the white then on top of that we are putting the other color okay so geom point is going to now come twice in this okay now clearly this is not a very useful thing to do or anything but we are just you know flexing our ggplot muscles that's all we are doing here okay so again mapping aesthetics x and y they are common for uh, both the geoms but we are using geom point twice right first time i'm plotting a white thing with size equals 4 okay so that's what is giving the big white blob and again look the, we didn't put the color white is inside aesthetic right because if you're putting something inside aesthetic then what you're saying is how that is plotted depends upon a value inside the data set but here we are putting a fixed value so that's not dependent on any value in the data set so you should put it outside of the aesthetic and I said size equal to 4 because I want the white disk to be somewhat big and then I plot the regular uh, plot um, of of course the the aesthetics I mean the x and y are still the same so this time I'm saying make the color based on the drive and make the size 2 so I'm uh, explicitly making it a little smaller so that you see the white disk and inside that a small point okay so it's just a nice little trick uh, so what it also illustrates is that the same geom can even occur multiple times nobody is stopping you 
Okay. In fact, you might want to plot some values here and then use geom point to plot a completely different set of data here too. If you want, you can do that. Okay. Now let's move on to a slightly different topic. And this topic is the topic of statistical transformations. Okay. So now we are going to look at this chart. ggplot data equals diamonds. Now diamonds is a data set that is already available inside R. Uh, I think it's inside the ggplot package actually. Okay, so you don't have to read the data. You just say data equals this because we've already loaded the package ggplot. So whatever data is associated with that is already available in the package. So you don't have to read it. It's just there. And then we are using a new geom that we have not seen before. Geom bar mapping equals aesthetic x equals cut. Okay, now this diamond data frame has a field called cut, has an attribute called cut, meaning this has got information about some 54,000 diamonds, actual, uh, you know, uh, precious stone diamonds, cut diamonds. And for every diamond, it has information about its weight, that is how many carats the diamond is. And then it has information about the various dimensions of the diamonds. There are three dimensions called X, Y, and Z dimensions, and we'll look at that later on. And then it's got information about the kind of cut the diamond has had, okay? That is the quality of the diamond. How good is the cut of the diamond? So that's what we are using here. So geom bar is sort of like a histogram, but it's not really a histogram. And in the geom bar, when you give it an aesthetic, which is an, a, a factor that is a categorical attribute, as you will shortly see, then what it's going to do is it's going to count the number of uh, rows for each of those values and then plot a bar. This is what you're going to get, okay? So cut is a variable. And cut has the values fair, good, very good, premium, and ideal. Okay, so those are the values. And what uh, when you use geom bar and you provide an x, x uh, mapping, aesthetic mapping, which is a factor or categorical variable, then the way it behaves is to count within the data set how many have each of these values. So for example, within our 54,000 odd diamonds, around uh, 22,000 diamonds have an ideal cut, okay? Around 13,000 something have a premium cut and about 1,000 have a fair cut and so on, okay? That's what this is showing. It's not a histogram, remember. In a histogram, here what we are doing is we are just counting for each value of the categorical variable, that is of the X uh, aesthetic, how many rows are there in the data frame. Okay, it looks like a histogram, but it's not a histogram because in a histogram, the, the attribute you provide is a continuous variable, or at least a numeric variable. And what it does is it divides the entire range into smaller buckets and then counts how many fall into each bucket. Okay, so there is a whole process of creating bins and putting the values in the bins and then counting them. Okay, you may say here also we are doing binning but it doesn't have to do any calculation to do the binning. It just has to say, okay, I'm going to take these and count up for each one how much is there. That's the difference between a geom bar and uh, a geom histogram, which we will see later on, right? So bar plots automatically bin the data and plot the counts on the y-axis. Histograms also do that, except that the binning process for histogram and the binning process for geom bar are different, okay? So when you did geom bar, it automatically performed the computation, right? Or when you do histogram, it automatically performs the computation, right? So when you do bar plots, histograms, and frequency polygons, we'll see this uh, in the next class or, or beyond, then it does, it bins the data and plots the counts. That's the behavior of that kind of plot, okay? And if you use smoothers, like uh, geom smooth, right? then it automatically, what it does is, it fits the data and then it plots the fitted or predicted value on the chart. And when you use box plots, you know what a box plot is. It computes a robust summary and plots a specialized box, right? So what, you're, what we are showing here is that for every kind of plot that you do, in other words, for every geom that you use, geom point or geom smooth or geom bar, Right? For every kind of geom you use, 
there is a certain kind of computation behind the scenes that ggplot automatically performs. That's why we call this as automatic transformations. Okay, so the name given to those automatic computations it performs is called a stat. Okay, because it's a statistical transformation. It's a method or algorithm used to compute new values to plot, right? Uh, of course, when you use a geom like geom point, no computation is performed. It simply plots every single point, right? There is no reduction of any kind. But when you use geom smooth or when you use geom bar, then there is a computation and then the computed values are plotted. In geom point, original points are directly plotted, okay? So this computation that is performed before plotting is what is called as a stat. Okay. In fact, if you type G question mark geom bar in our studio, then and then go and look at the result you get, that will tell you that the default stat for it is count. Okay. That is by default when you use geom bar, it'll it'll perform that computation and that kind of computation is what is called as a stat count. Okay. So this is what is going on. So you did a geom bar, it begins with the diamond data set, then we said x equals cut, so it transforms. For every value of cut, it finds out how many cases are there, right? And then it, uh, it also computes the proportion for each one. In fact, this is what it does. So basically what it says is proportion uh, of fair within fair is one, right? So initially this proportion seems a little crazy, they all come out as one, right? And then when you do geom bar, it does the plotting and you see the result, okay? So the, uh, the uh, x-axis the, is, is the, the variable by which you, you, you specified. So the cut comes into the x-axis, the counts go into the y-axis, okay? This is how geom bar actually works, right? So in, G, in ggplot, Every geom has an associated default stat connected to it, okay? Uh, for example, geom bar, the stat connected with it, it's called uh, uh, geom count, I mean stat count, okay? Uh, and so on, okay? And every stat has an associated geom, right? Uh, we won't use this very much, but in fact, you can get the same result by using stat count instead of geom bar, right? Because geom bar is connected with stat count and stat count is connected with geom bar. So if you say stat count, meaning you, you use this function, then it'll automatically say, okay, I will plot the uh, geom bar, okay? We won't use this very much, but it's there, okay? You can actually replace stat if you want, okay? Once again, I'll just show you, uh, maybe later on we'll see. Okay, now here there is a function we are using demo equals triple. Okay, triple is just a convenient way of creating, for now you can think of it as a convenient way of creating a data frame very easily. Okay, now normally when you create a data frame, you have to create uh, individual vectors and then combine them into a data frame. Whereas here you can create it more naturally. So I'm just saying triple within brackets, then I'm saying comma, uh, a comma B comma and then we put a tilde to say that these are variable names or attribute names and then we just say bar 120 bar 230 bar 340 okay so these are like the values of this attribute and these are the values of these other attribute okay uh, we just like you notice that you, all of them are simply separated by commas and just for ease of convenience for convenience and ease of understanding we just lined up the values under A and under B so that we know that this is the data frame we are creating, right? So this is a much more convenient way of creating a data frame. So now if you do, uh, this is just the name of the data frame we just created. And then we say data equals demo plus geom bar mapping. Uh, we say x equals a and y equals b. Okay, that is put uh, a on the x-axis, b on the y-axis. That's it, okay? But you may say, well, when you do geom bar doesn't doesn't it automatically do this counting thing by x equals a? We are saying no. That it will do only if it is using the stat count statistic. But now we are going to tell it, look, don't do any counting. Just plot what I'm telling you. That's it. 
then it that you say that by telling it stat equals identity identity means keep it as it is don't do any computation right then of course it'll just simply plot it it'll just put a and put the size of that which is 20 b 30 uh, i mean i mean i mean bar 1 to uh, uh, bar 1 is the value here 20 bar 230 bar 340 it's just going to plot it no transformation occurred here because we told it explicitly look i don't want you to do any transformation right otherwise by default geom bar is going to do a transformation okay so you can actually replace the stat which is what we did in the previous one okay uh, so this example here uh, we, what we are trying to do is to plot instead of the counts of the number of diamonds for each kind of cut we want to plot the proportions okay so to do the proportions again i'm going to say x aesthetic x equals cut and if you leave out y then it will simply plot the counts but if you say y equals dot dot prop dot dot that's kind of a reserved word to tell it i want you to prop plot proportions okay but we know that from the previous slide here, we know that all those proportions are initially going to turn out as just one, right? So notice here, right? So initially it's going to make all the proportions as one because the fair diamonds, the numerator and denominator, both is going to use the same count. So all the proportions turn out to be one, right? So if you're not careful and if you use this approach of proportions, okay, then all the bars will come out basically as one because all the proportions are one right but you want to tell it don't take the proportion of each value as itself but take the proportion of each value as a proportion of the total right to force it to go to the total you just have to say group equals and it really doesn't matter what you put to the right hand side here okay so the moment you say that you're saying okay uh, you know take it as a proportion of the total okay so that's what we are going to show here. Geom bar uses the stat count, right? So by default, it plots like this, right? We just said y equals prop. And then, of course, the prop values are all one. So it's going to come out like this. If you want it to come out correctly like this, then you have to do group equals one or group equals something, right? In fact, anything. You can put group equals and then put anything there, any number there. And then it says, okay, I'll take the proportions of the total. Okay, it doesn't seem very logical, but this is how it actually works.